so you'll um, just keep keep in mind that it is recorded. Um, and we're going to be posting it on the website um, at business.delaware.gov afterwards. So feel free to share uh, the webinar with anyone that you think um, might benefit from it. Um, so again, um, for those who may, uh, maybe missed when I mentioned this, uh, the webinar is set up as um, a webinar in Zoom, um, which means that the attendees are all muted. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentations, um, please put those questions um, into the Q&A. Um, I will also put in some information if you have specific questions about your business or about a project um, that you maybe wanted to bring to us as a division separately, you can email us at business at Delaware.gov, or you can give us a call at 302-739-4271. Again, I'll type that into the chat once we get moving. Um, just a reminder, applications for the Site Readiness Fund are due um, by February 18th. Um, so um, we, we tried to give people, um, you know, enough notice so that they could see the webinar and get their questions answered in time to fill out the application. Um, so um, with that, um, joining us today to present um, is Jordan Schulteis um, from our division, uh, the Division of Small Business, and also Becky Harrington uh, from the Delaware Prosperity Partnership. Um, so I'm going to pass it on to Jordan for her to introduce herself, and then we'll get moving. Thank you, Jess. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited to be at this point in the road. I know this has been a long time coming and a lot of you, uh, I, I see some familiar names in the attendees. I know a lot of you have been waiting with bated breath for this to come. Um, I've been following it since it was in the legislative session last year. So um, this is really exciting. We have some of our staff on today, uh, Regina Mitchell, who's our deputy director, and then Amy Ravel, who's our business finance director. Uh, they're going to be more involved in the day-to-day -day activities if you're turning in an application. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to, to anybody in our division or anybody at DPP. Uh, we always take the no wrong door approach. So if you have a question, um, please get in touch and we'll connect you with the right person to answer your question. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Becky and she's going to get us started. Thanks, Jordan. Um, my name is Becky Harrington. I'm the business development director with the Delaware Prosperity Partnership. And uh, joining the panel today is another Becky Harrington, but it's really Kurt Foreman, our president and CEO. Um, so happy to be here today, waiting for this day to come. Um, it's fun to watch uh, this program roll out, but um, just let me get started with some of the background on the Site Readiness Fund. Um, it's important for states and communities to have an inventory of properties ready for development. And it's really essential in attracting quality projects, jobs, capital investment to the state. Uh, once a company makes the decision to expand or relocate, usually it's speed to market and um, finding a site quickly is very crucial in the decision-making process. Um, companies wanna locate in places where they can be operational quickly, sometimes within the year. Uh, states and communities that have ready to go sites uh, win the deals. That's why at least 36 states have some sort of site readiness initiative to encourage a constant inventory and flow of developable properties. So it's important that Delaware has the chance to compete on projects and that our cupboard's not bare um, and that we have site options. Senate Bill 127, the Site Readiness Fund, um, aims to help Delaware compete for these national projects by hopefully increasing site options throughout the state. Um, the program was established to make sure that we have sites ready for the future, but it's really not intended for projects that are already in motion or under development. It's intended for those sites um, that are in the early stages of development. Um, the, the funds, the site readiness funds, it's a matching concept with owners contributing at least 50% of the project costs. And there has to be buy-in or community support from the local county or municipality um, in which the site is located. So DPP is partnering with um, the Division of Small Business um, by assisting uh, applicants with the applications, understanding the program and then um, also helping review some of the grant projects um, to make sure they're in line with the state's goals and objectives. 
uh, the State Readiness Fund will make Delaware a better place um, by providing more viable sites for attracting future jobs and investment to the state. So that's kind of the background of why the Site Readiness Fund was created. Um, I'll turn it over to Jordan, who will provide more information on the application and process. Jordan? All right. I think everybody can see my screen. So I'm going to talk more specifically about the actual application process. That's the piece that's kind of been missing from, from the puzzle that everybody's been asking a lot of questions about. You know, we've known since last June that this money was going to be available and coming. And now the question has been, what's the process to, to get into it? So we're going to talk about that today. Um, I also wanted to back up and kind of give the, the background for maybe those who didn't know. Um, the Division of Small Business operates two separate component units. We have the Delaware Tourism Office, and then we also have the Delaware Economic Development Authority. And the authority is going to be the, the actual vehicle for administering this program. That is also the, uh, the vehicle that works with the Council on Development Finance. So some of you may be familiar with that process and appearing there in the public hearing and, and things like that. So that's just kind of a mechanics thing just to give you a little bit of background. Um, as Becky said, Senate Bill 127 was passed last year. Um, we were appropriated $10 million for fiscal year 22 for that program. Uh, to date, this is the first round. So uh, this is the inaugural run at, at this. So there is a full $10 million available for funding. The program provides for um, renovation, construction, other improvements in infrastructure, utilities, things like that. Uh, the main goal of this program, we cannot say it enough, is inventory. We're looking to get sites to keep in inventory so that we're out marketing the state. We're really competitive because we have a list of sites ready to go. So, you know, again, to reiterate what Becky is saying, it's not for sites that already have, you know, somebody identified or are already well underway. This is to really bring sites that are at the very beginning stages up to the point where they could be finished very quickly for folks who wanted to relocate to Delaware or maybe even folks who want to expand in Delaware. Eligible applicants can be private or public entities. This is a question we actually got in over the past week. We anticipate that some of this is gonna go both ways. So we're gonna have some private developers who will be eligible for the program and will submit an application. We'll have some municipalities that have some, some projects they would like to get going. They're also eligible for the program. Um, and then under that same vein, nonprofit entities would be eligible as well under this program if they have an eligible project. This is going to be split into two different levels in the applications, level one and level two. Level one is really going to be stuff that's on a smaller scale. It's going to be things that we're, we're just getting started. We need a lot of site prep studies, uh, environmental work, things, environmental studies, I'm sorry, things like that. Um, and that's going to be uh, capped at about $100,000. And those will be um, payable up front. So at the time of contract execution, the money would pass to you for the project to get your site studies underway. Level two are going to be the things that are a little more advanced. You know, maybe you, your studies are all done. You're ready to move on to actually, you know, moving dirt around the site to bring the utilities in and things like that. Uh, that is matching up to 50% of the project. We do not have a hard cap on that because it is dependent on the number of applications that we receive versus the funding available. You can find these applications on our website, delbiz.com uh, or business.delaware.gov. They both get you to the same place. There is a banner across the top of the site that you can click on, or you can find it under the programs list and navigate to it that way. When you are done with your application, it's in PDF fillable form. So when you're done with that, go ahead and email that over to business underscore finance at delaware.gov and make sure that you send all of the attachments that are required. We are anticipating that this is going to be a really competitive round just because the demand has been so pent up for this that we're expecting to be well oversubscribed to the $10 million that's available. So please do not make yourself a less attractive applicant because you did not submit all of your stuff and figured we would just follow up with you to get those things. That's probably not going to be possible just based on the volume. So please, please, please make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and submit everything the first time through. 
So in that application, it's going to ask you for a good number of things. We just wanted to highlight some of the, the things that you're going to see here. You have to have sponsorship from at least one public entity. Um, if you are a municipality, you need to have a recommendation from the county um, that you reside in. If you are a private developer, you're going to go to the, the most applicable one from there and get your, your public endorsement. That is required. So that's another instance where if you're submitting an application that's not complete, we won't be able to move forward with it. So make sure you start on that now. Please do not wait until February 18th and then demand that, that those folks issue you letters at the last minute. Uh, you need to submit three years of financial statements or tax returns. You do not need both, that is an or. So if you have audited financial statements, that's fantastic. You can attach those and send them over. Um, if not, that's okay. Tax returns for the business work as well. You'll see this when we get a little bit further in the, um, the exhibits list. It makes the reference to personal financial statements and that, that's an area that causes a lot of heartburn. We get a lot of questions around. We do not want your personal financial statements unless we specifically reach out to you and say, we need your personal financial statements. So please do not submit them. Um, they are generally not required. Most of the time we have sufficient information in the business information. So that's where we will start with all of that. You're gonna need a certificate of good standing and a business license. The business license must be valid and current issued by the Delaware Division of Revenue. And your certificate of good standing, you can get through the Delaware Division of Corporations. Project source and use of funds, we're gonna get to that um, in a couple slides as well and talk about that in a little bit more detail, but it's essentially your project budget. Management ownership information, uh, we need to know who owns the, the company who's applying for the funds. We need to know your project cost estimates, which of course ties back into your budget. Uh, submit us your plans, your surveys, your site concepts. If you don't have those things, if you're applying for level one and saying, well, I need it to get those things, that's okay. We will see that you're applying for level one and you will not have an application tossed because you didn't have that specific component. And then finally, just proof of property ownership, signature of property owner, if that is not you. So, so if the applicant for the program is not the owner of the property, make sure that you are working with the property owner and that they know you are applying for the program. So this is the project source and use of funds, and this is essentially your project budget. So this needs to be a full cost estimate of what you think it's gonna to take to get this site moving forward. And more specifically, the, the stage that you're in here. So your site readiness project is gonna be the specific qualifying item that you're gonna have under this program. So if you're applying for a level one, and you want a site plan and it's gonna cost you the full $100,000. I'm sorry, it's gonna cost you $200,000. So you're requesting the full $100,000, 50% max. You would put $100,000 funded by the grant and then $100,000 funded by the applicant in that column. So that you would have under site readiness project, a line item that says site plan. The first column would read $100,000. The second column would read $100,000. Ideally, under that, you have some estimate of what it's going to cost you to finish developing this site. If you do, go ahead and list that out here. If you were a level one applicant, again, you wouldn't have anything in the funded by grant column because at this particular point, you're not asking for grant funding for any of the future activities. You would just be giving your best estimate to say, this is where we think our project cost is going to land. If you are a level two applicant, that's going to work a little bit different. A lot of the things that are just general project cost are probably what you're asking for site readiness funds for. So some of those items are gonna be up in the site readiness project and you would need to break that down to be pretty specific as to what it is you're asking for funding for. And again, break it down into column. If the full cost of a specific activity is $500,000, make sure you're breaking it down between what you're asking to be funded by the grant versus what you yourself will be funding. And then of course your total project cost should add up to what the entire thing is gonna cost. So don't forget to add those things that maybe you're not requesting grant funding for um, so that we can see the full scope and scale of what you are investing to get this project ready for market. The other thing that is worth mentioning here too is that you should also be prepared to attach cost estimates if you have them. So using the level one example for a site plan, if you're asserting that a site plan is gonna cost you $200,000, your application is gonna be that much stronger if you have something to attach to it, some kind of estimate that says, I am planning to work with ABC firm 
and it's going to cost me two hundred thousand dollars. Kind of lends a little bit of credibility to to what's being proposed. Management and ownership is generally pretty straightforward. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things, some common pitfalls that we see in this area. Make sure you're listing out all of the owners that you are providing the social security number or tax ID of every single owner. If you are owned by four individuals and you list the business EIN for that social security field, that won't work. We need the social security number of all four individuals. We need to know what their ownership percentage is and what their address is. And that ownership percentage needs to total uh, 100. We need to know full ownership of, of the entities that are there. And then this is the exhibits required that we referenced a little bit earlier. It looks kind of like a long with list, I'm sorry, when you first open it up. Um, but when you start to break it down, most of it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we already talked about management and ownership that's there. This, this is where it's just, it almost functions like a checklist. So, you know, the certificate of good standing needs to be there. Business license needs to be there. Um, and where people, I think, start to get a little bit more confused is down in the financial information. And that goes back into don't send us your personal financial statements unless we ask. Um, but it's also, I think, a little bit unclear here with the financial statements versus the tax return. We don't need both. We need one or the other. So it's okay if you check NA for tax returns if you're sending us audited financial statements. Um, and then jumping down to personal financial statements, section D, you see there it says if applicable. So that, again, only if we contact you specifically and say, we need your personal financial statements. Otherwise, please do not send them over. And then your last section here is um, in E, certificate of, certificate of Incorporation, Corporate Bylaws, things like that. You can use that just like a checklist. Make sure you're attaching all of those things or giving some kind of consideration if you think you don't have them. Is there something that you should be submitting in lieu of? And if you run into that situation where you're just unsure, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, you can reach our office by phone, by email. Um, and somebody can get back to you with an answer to your specific question. And then in section F here, these are things that are really, really specific to this program. A lot of the other things, if you've applied for our other programs before, you probably are familiar with this. It probably looks pretty familiar to you. F are the things that are really, really specific to site readiness. So we're going to be asking you for a good amount of detail on the specific site that you want to develop and bring to market. So we're going to be asking for all of these things for you from you um, to move forward. And don't forget, some of these things are required by code. So if those are the things that you miss, we won't be able to move the application forward. So make sure that you're hitting all of those checks, check marks. And if you can't, that you're really thinking about maybe what you should be submitting in lieu of, or if it's truly just not applicable for your situation. So we posted applications back on January the 6th. They've been out for a couple of weeks now. They will be due February 18th. They must be submitted by close of business February the 18th to be considered. And then in early March, we're going to have an internal investment committee meeting to review all the applications that we received. We have a limited amount of funding, so we're not going to be able to fund every single project that is submitted for consideration. So the purpose of the committee is going to be to prioritize those applications based on who we think is going to be able to a undertake the project. That's one of the requirements that uh, we as the division or specifically the authority have to do under Delaware code. We have to make sure that the entity proposing the project is capable of actually performing the project. So there'll be a, an evaluation of that specifically. And then also just again, looking at the sites and saying, which one of these sites do we think is gonna be the most marketable if we can get this project done? What is gonna be something that's really attractive to again, folks coming to Delaware, folks expanding in Delaware. So that's gonna play a big part in it as well. Those that are selected out of that process who you know, are ranked the highest are gonna be moved forward to the Council on Development Finance. And those presentations are gonna happen on March the 28th. That is a public meeting. Again, for those of you who are familiar with that process, we have a nine member council. They meet typically on a monthly basis and they hear the projects that are being put forth for consideration um, mostly from the Delaware Strategic Fund, but we do have a couple of other things that they hear as well. Uh, so this is going to be the first time that they're hearing these projects. So, you know, we're expecting a lot of really great questions to come out of that. Um, 
a lot of a lot of interesting things. It's a, it's an exciting time moving Delaware forward. So excited for our council members to be a part of that. They're looking forward to it as well. Um, and then that will be on March the 28th. So just reiterating a couple things of how we're going to evaluate these applications once they're in. First thing we're going to do is check for those things that we're required to do under code. Is there a public sponsor? Is the project going to create the opportunity for significant full-time jobs? Um, does the applicant have financial stability? And does the project serve an overall public purpose? And that public purpose really ties back into, does the site appear capable of creating the type of development that will support permanent quality full-time jobs for Delaware moving forward? So just a little infographic here. Um, we're gonna start at the internal investment committee level. From there, it goes to the Council on Development Finance. Uh, they make a recommendation to the authority on the projects, and then the authority makes the final decision on who is funded and at what level. So I know that was a, a quick flyby of a, a little bit of an intricate process. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, I think we have a couple questions that have come in. So I'm gonna kick it back to Jess. Uh, to help us moderate questions. Sure, so we'll start with the questions in the Q&A box. Um, so we'll start with Linda Parkowski's question. She said, will the fund be used for targeted industries? That's probably not something that's going to come into play as far as being an absolute decision maker. I think it's something to be taken into consideration because some of those industries are really specific. So certain sites can, only be used for certain things or certain vice versa, certain industries can only go to certain sites. Um, but some sites is gonna be wide open as to what that is. So that's where it's gonna come into play. What is the area zoned? What are the potential possibilities? Um, but I'm not sure that it's gonna be an absolute yes or no from that specifically. Becky, by the way, feel free to add or jump in or tell me I've lost my mind at any point. Yeah, that's right, that's right. It's hard to predict um targeted industries down the road too. By the time these sites are up and going, there may be another industry that we don't even know about or that we're not targeting, but that that's right. All right, next question. Or Jordan, uh, Jessica, Parker. this is Kurt. Um, Jordan, we're not, are, are we, <clears throat> if someone wants to build say a shopping center, we're not focusing on that kind of an operation, correct? No, that is not the focus of the site readiness fund. That, and again, it goes back to what exactly we're looking to market as a strategy for, from a state perspective. And our strategy from an economic development level is not retail. So this, this fund is not meant to support that specifically. All right, um, we have a question from Mark Parker and we um, received a similar question from an anonymous attendee. Um, if we are a county applicant, do we need a higher level sponsorship? So it sounds really weird, but if you are a county level applicant, you need to get a letter from yourself. So I hope that you are willing to grant yourself that kind of permission. Um, but yes, you would write a letter just signed by your county administrator, your council saying, yes, this is consistent with our county use strategies and this is what we would like to do. County administrator, county executive, I know there's some different terms for depending on which county you're in. Uh, all right, we had a question from David Donahue and Kurt may have answered this already, um, but I'll read it out loud. Um, he says, we are a private medical office hoping to, hoping to open a second location. Um, would this program assist with finding possible locations? No, so this program is gonna focus specifically, specifically on bringing um, sites ready to be developed. Okay. But the good news, David, is that there are staff at in each there are staff on the division of small business in each county or area of the county and there also are county and local economic developers or our staff who certainly can get you started on the path to um how best to find spots and what we're hoping this program will do is allow us to continue to have a cupboard full of great spots around the state that someone like you could choose all right, thanks, Kurt. Um, Deb Cheney asked, um, she says, I have multiple sites that may be applicable. Can I submit multiple applications? Yes, there is no cap on the number of applications that each applicant can submit. We would be evaluating at the specific project level. 
All right, um, Stephen uh, Andres, I hope I said that correctly, asked uh, if we have a site under contract, we would not have three years of financials. So would we submit three years of sponsoring entities, um, for example, developer? Is that right? Can you read that to me one more time? I want to make sure. sure he right. says, he says, if we have a site under contract, we would not have three years of financials. So would we submit three years of sponsoring entities, for example, the developer? Yes, if there's a developer that is undertaking the project, even if the site is new or actually not even purchased yet, we would be looking for the financial statements of the developer. All right. Um, we have a question in the chat. Um, you mentioned retail does not qualify for this grant. Can you clarify what types of projects would qualify? It's going to fall within kind of the economic development strategy. So we're not necessarily saying it has to be ABC industries, but there are definitely things from a, a strategy standpoint that we don't pursue through, through those programs. And unfortunately, retail is one of those. Um, I, I think another area where we have not historically pursued is uh, like medical office buildings and things like that. Um, Kurt, if there's other things I'm missing. Yeah, maybe the easiest way is to give you some examples. So let's yeah. say that uh, you have a site that might be a great future manufacturing uh, site for the for the area or uh, distribution or um, finance, you know, a, a call center or something that brings jobs and investment into that part of the, the state. Uh, the best way I think to help retail is if there's more money in our pockets as residents, and then the retailers will have every reason to locate in that area because there'll be more money for them to make. So this is really about uh, sort of key sectors of our economy. And uh, we have a number of them listed on our website, Choose Delaware. But um, again, this is one place where the DPP staff or the division staff can probably uh, give you some follow-up direction on a particular situation you may have in mind. I would add um, multifamily residential. Again, it goes back to if we create the jobs, they will go out and rent the apartments or buy the houses. So residential is not part of the focus right now either. Uh, all right. Jessica, there's a good question about comprehensive plans that just popped up. Oh, from her. Uh, okay, so he says, since land use decisions are required by state code to be consistent with certified comprehensive plans, are you requiring such consistency? Yes, that's the short answer. Uh, the, the longer answer there is it's really important to us in this program that we're staying consistent with what the strategies are at both the state, county, local levels. So that's really something that we're looking at as we look at each application is, is this type of project and any potential future uses of it consistent with what the planning strategy is. And if I could just add on the application, um, you're asked to provide the state investment level of the site, which dovetails with each community's um, comprehensive plan. Um, those levels are rated based on the comp plan the current zoning, services, water, sewer, um, gas, infrastructure, transportation. So um, if you don't know if your property is what the level is, you can go to um, the state planning department, the plus um, website and search investment, state investment level, and you can search for your property by address. It's a really cool website. And that's why this is also why we want the municipality or the county to provide a letter of support so that we're not supporting a site that say a community doesn't want to see developed the way the applicant wants to. We don't want to get into a, well, that's not what we want the site to be. So we want it to be congruent all the way through that process. Okay, thank you all. Um, 
We had a question from Will Minster. He said, will there be funds set aside for small parcels or vacant buildings similar to the DDD program? I didn't catch the beginning of that. Something Sorry. Like the DDD program. Yeah, will there be funds set aside for small parcels or vacant buildings similar to DDD? At this point, the only way we're segregating the funds is level one versus level two. Um, we're expecting some of these level two projects are going to get pretty expensive. Uh, they're, they're just not cheap projects to undertake. So we wanted to make sure there was still some space for some of the smaller pieces without that didn't get crowded out. So at this point, that's the only set aside, though. Buildings, buildings really weren't the initial focus of the plan. Um, that might evolve in future rounds, but I think right now we're talking about getting sites sites ready. Now, if you have a building that is uh, available, one, you should make sure that we, we know about it and that it's uh, we can make sure that we drive projects your way if you do have a building. Um, but this was really focused on getting more sites because as we're successful as a state and in individual communities, those sites no longer are available because they're being used. We need to have the next wave of sites. So that was really the focus of doing this. Um, all right, we have a um, second part of a question in the Q&A about um, county support. Um, do municipalities need to supply a business license and a statement of good standing? Uh, so your municipalities are going to be a little bit unique. They're not going to have those things. So, you no, know, you would not have a, a business license necessarily from a town perspective. All right. Um, Deb Cheney asked in the chat, will the fund help with costs of subdivision to create parcels ready for development? There is nothing that would specifically prohibit that as being a cost if that was a project that we felt was competitive against the others. Um. Uh, the application asks for environmental status. Will preference be given to grants towards sites that require environmental remediation? There will not be a penalty for environmental remediation if that's kind of the, the crux of the question. We would not specifically exclude a site because it needed environmental remediation. But there are other sources to help with that. So this, this was not necessarily intended to be the main source to help with those issues. So again, if we can help uh, direct someone to other, other sources, if while they're getting their site ready, if they also are working on that issue, I think either of our staffs would be happy to make sure you get to other sources. Uh, like DENREC or whatever that may have programs. Uh, and many of you know those programs already. So uh, I realize that's sort of sharing the, something that you already know, but this is not meant to be the main source to clean up a property. Um, all right, uh, most of the other questions we've gotten are very specific to projects. Uh, so again, I would just ask everyone who's attending, if you have questions, um, that are specific to a project you have in mind, um, please feel free to send us an email at business at Delaware.gov um, and we can help answer your questions um, about your project. Um, uh, we had another question, which we've already answered in the Q&A. Um, it says, and municipalities need county support or can we write a letter supporting ourselves? Um, and you can write a letter supporting yourself. Right, yeah, and Jess, I think I might have misspoke earlier. I think that might be where that question came from. Municipalities and counties can write letters for themselves. Okay, perfect. Um, we did have one question that Matt Harris has asked us to address. Sorry, um, some of these questions are getting lost. Um, Matt said, would a person who owns a building looking to open a small business be a good candidate for this program? I think Kurt did touch on that a little bit. Um, but if you could just give us a little bit more. That'd be sure. Great. And, and it may be, depending on what, what, your, what that business is, it may be that a staff member at the county economic development office or the 
Division of Small Business may be the right place to get started, or we're happy to take that call and move it and, and get you to the right partner. Um, but this is, again, remember, this is meant to get sites ready so that picture it being the grocery store. So there are sites on the shelves that a company who's looking to locate here can choose from rather than, hey, I've got a company I'm growing. I've already picked my site out. Now I want to get it ready. That's a different, that's a different animal in, in our opinion. Um, so if, if any of us can help you, we're happy to um, talk. There may be other, other ways to help you if you've already identified a site that you want to use for yourselves. Um, there may be other ways to help you. All right, and um, one more question from Robert Wittig. He said, can developer or applicant funds be borrowed? Borrowed? Borrowed, yeah. Borrowed from another source? I think that's what he's Probably, asking. Probably, rather than in their hand already. Jordan, yeah. what do you guys think? Yeah, we're more looking for public funds versus private funds, not necessarily cash applicant funds, but just private funds that are the applicant would ultimately be responsible for. Uh, he said from a lender as part of the overall budget. Yep, that would qualify as private funds. Okay. All right, uh, that's all the questions we have. Um, again, if we've missed your question um, or if you have specific questions about a project, uh, that you have in mind, please shoot us an email to business at Delaware.gov. Um, we will definitely get someone to help answer your question, um, either from Division of Small Business or from the Delaware Prosperity Partnership. Uh, so I just want to thank um, everyone um, for joining us um, for the webinar. It will be recorded um, or it was recorded and it will be posted on our website at business.delaware.gov. You'll see a banner at the top of the website where you can click to get right to the site readiness fund page. So with that, I think we are good. Um, thank you again to everyone for joining.